It says All right, we're, live, we're doing it. <laughs> it, it. It has to work now. If you've been hanging around for the last 12, 11 minutes, uh, we um, had some technical difficulties, and that's on my side. So we're going to get right to the point here. I'm going to try things a little differently. Can you see the chat? Uh, I, I can see it on the uh, – yeah, I mean, on the screen ask, I see it. Ask people if they're hearing the same thing I'm hearing because maybe it's me and it doesn't even matter. Oh, hold on. Wait a second now. Okay, I can see the chat. So if, if, if anybody hears any audio issues, just like let us know in the, in the chat uh, and, and we'll fix it. We'll try to. Who knows if we can, but I'm just curious now because we were talking and like, you know, obviously whenever you try something new, there's always going to be some issues, but the issues we had, <laughs> I don't know if they're fixed or not. Well, here, let me ask you a question. We're all learning, and by we, I mean me. Uh, so I just tried to, to comment and say, is anyone here? How's the sound? And it says YouTube doesn't support comments on private videos. So obviously this video is private. How do I, I guess I do that later. <laughs> I can't see any comments apparently. I don't, I, it must've, I, the default must've been, I mean, that's good. I guess you can just, then there's no one watching this. If it's private. So you can just like <laughs> end it. Wait, um, you see chat and you can see I, the chat. I, I can't see the I, – I mean, there's no comments at all. There's no one watching, I don't think. If it's private, then I wouldn't think yeah. that – I guess I'll go to your YouTube channel right now. Why and would we'll, it – we'll, I have no idea. I've never had that happen to me. Well, if it – oh, here, hold on. Let me see. Boom. Okay, it says live on your YouTube channel. Wait. Did that pop up? Okay, yeah, it looks like it's streaming. So We're even though it says people. private, it's not private. <laughs> I, think I think we've been live for like two minutes. That's all right. It's still, it's still probably better two minute content than uh, a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, anyway, hello anybody that's watching this. Sorry for the the whatever. That's that's life uh, when you flip the world. I'm gonna try and not mess this up and make too much noise. I'm gonna get right into it, guys. I'm not gonna let him. I'm gonna not say who he is and then have him do it. I'm just gonna tell you. This is Walter Blake Knobloch. He is the reason that I even started reselling. Uh, he is famous for being on extreme unboxing it's the show that takes unboxing <laughs> to the extreme um and uh just to give you a backstory the reason i picked him to be the first um punishment on my live is <laughs> <laughs> i got started reselling probably was it was like 2016 17 is when you put up that video so i had it planned eight, to have 18 even maybe I think it was 17, but either way, he made a video on making like 15 or $20,000 a year selling used VCRs. And I don't know where or how it popped up in my recommended on YouTube because at the time I wasn't even considering reselling or anything. I just had other things going on. And for whatever reason, it annoyed me. <laughs> And I wanted to <laughs> make it my mission to prove that he was full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So the next day, Stacy and I went to a Goodwill. I found a VCR. It was a Magnavox. I had my Amazon account. I listed it. And before we went to bed at midnight, midnight I got a notification that it had sold for like 90 something dollars. And <laughs> I want to say I either commented or I reached out to you through Instagram. It was just like, I thought you were full of shit, but you're not. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even remember. I'm, yeah, but I, I remember like you telling me that story, but I don't remember it happening at all. Yeah, it. Um, it or it might have been a, like a YouTube comment. Yeah, I think it was on on the YouTube video. I had said like, came here to prove you wrong. Damn it! If it didn't sell in the <laughs> 24 hours, you know. <laughs> yeah, great, great PR for the video. Yeah, and uh, and and I've been I've been following and interacting and 
and trying to um, to to keep up with you since and and learning lots and lots and lots. Um, I think by far you are the most uh, non biased, to the point, no fluff reseller um, that is on YouTube. And I think you've definitely put in the the years because if you go back through your catalog. Um, you have a lot of. I've been videos. saying the same stuff for yeah. a long time, which yeah. is awesome because it's, that means uh, that it works. It, I, I, hopefully, it keeps working. Who knows, man? Amazon's a change, and I've noticed, especially with content on YouTube, like reselling has got has become its own like niche, where like there's like people who just like voyeuristically watch. Like thrift hauls are a great example of that, where not many folks are going to get the kind of information they can make money with watching thrift hauls. But for most channels, those are the most popular videos like that they have or like thrift with me or that kind of stuff. Whereas I would think um, like what sold videos are probably the most useful. But when I post like a what sold video, it gets like a third of the views when I post like a ride along with me as I buy these things. Um, because I think there are people who just like want to like watch some someone else do the work which is kind of shitty but that's the internet i guess it's uh it's the being part of the treasure hunt but not actually having to do any of the work yeah putting no skin in the game not having yeah. a messy ass warehouse like me <laughs> yeah no i didn't even know how to put the the camera to where it just didn't look like a disaster and for someone who like constantly makes videos about hating clutter and organization like i'm just like oh i've been exposed this is <laughs> it looks looks fine to me man <laughs> You've got uh, everything on a shelf, nothing on the floor. There's no like loose cords dangling. A plus. No, no, no. That's 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 all in front of, of me that you can't see. Like my my phone, uh, my camera is set up on a, a cardboard box upside down, and you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm my guy using milk crates, but I am. Uh, but that's hidden. It's hidden though. Exactly. So you wouldn't even know it was there if I didn't say it. Um, so guys in the in the chat that I'm probably ignoring because again, first time doing this, so. He's going to try and maybe catch out to people. Uh, what do you like to be called? That is actually a funny uh, question. I'm going to go ahead and show that. Look at that. I know how to show things because All right. it's, it's something that I have written down because I just call you by your last name, which is more military style, <laughs> but it's just how it's how I engage with all of my friends in the music scene that if they don't have a nickname, we just call each other by our last names. But then I was on with uh, Drew Profit Monster and he calls you Blake. And then I've been on with, uh, or then I've chatted with uh, Josh and he calls you Walter. And I'm just like, this guy has m endless names. So, yeah, if, I know. It's not good. I got to brand if, myself better. If somebody walked up to you off the street right now and was like, hi, I'm Chris, how would you respond? It, so, the people who like know me, they call me Blake. People who don't know me call me Walter. And I kind of like having that differentiation. <laughs> Because, you know, like if I get a phone call and they're like, is Walter Knobloch there? Just hang up. Oh, because yeah. Because sure. I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, but just like, uh, you know, WBK is fine. Walter is fine. Blake is fine. Knobloch is fine. It's all the fucking same thing. You know, it's what my name is Walter Blake Knobloch. So any variation of those names <laughs> is going to be correct, in my opinion. Um, well, I, but uh, I just I, I I think for simplicity's sake, WBK makes the most sense. Like when you're chatting and stuff, because like I don't know, it's the shortest. Yeah, and um, if you're into uh, as serial killers like I am, it's perfect because you've already got yourself. Oh uh, yeah, right. right. <laughs> the Amazon killer. <laughs> Yikes, dude! That's gonna happen. Someone's gonna be, like put poison in Amazon or something like that, and it's gonna kill like six people. Like an Amazon fulfillment center worker is going to be like putting arsenic in bottled water or something crazy like that. Anytime there is a, uh, uh, like a, I think it was a ricin uh, attempt at the White House, I always think about that. I was like, the more we get into Walmart shipping our groceries and Amazon and, and all these, all these fulfillment centers, all it's going to take is one rogue, demented employee. Maniac. <laughs> It's like, how do you have 27 people in 25 different states all die of the same thing at the same time within the same three-day span? Oh, well, it had to come from a fulfillment. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, it's getting to that point where that I'm surprised that there hasn't been, like, lower – maybe there have and they just catch it. Like, 
I mean, I know that theft is a big issue. So yeah. they have to have cameras. But like, what if someone like, like, you know, takes a banana, I, I don't know, I can't think of anything off the top. Like someone takes a stuffed animal and like rubs it on their butt and then puts it into a box. Like, how do they catch that? I don't know, but the visual is hilarious. That would be a great YouTube channel. It's just like caught on camera. Amazon uh. Filament Factory. <laughs> what you really don't know goes on. And that's why you have to yeah, put these all the, all the bags. <laughs> right? It's actually a, a butt protection bag. Yeah. That way, if you order something from Amazon and it comes and the bag's like shiny or extra greasy, you know, like, oh, man. <laughs> Return that. <laughs> Send it back. You don't want to touch it. <laughs> See, guys, I told you it was not going to be your regular live. We're getting into the real stuff this, that we think about. This is how I, my live streams are like when I'm talking to people, it's so low quality in, reg in terms of like actual information being conveyed. Because all I do is just like go off on tangents and talk about random stuff because I, I talk about fucking Amazon all goddamn day. So yeah. I'm just like, oh, a chance not like do you dread when people ask you what you do? I yeah, hate I, that question because, like, the UPS guy asked me today. He's like, so what are you doing there? And I was like, do I tell him that I'm, like, a part-time social media influencer slash garbage reseller? Like, what do I say? Because that sounds, like, pathetic and terrible. And maybe it is. Maybe I just need to change my life. But I don't think it's pathetic and terrible. Um, but just, like, the way that the way that people understand, like, selling things on eBay and making YouTube videos – is still stuck in like 2005 or 2007 where just yeah. like it's like what kids do when they're wasting time and not like a way to convey information or provide value to people like i don't want to you know you can't be like i made this much money of course it's real because then you're an asshole <laughs> but like yeah that's that's I, I just the, uh, uh, that's the dilemma i have with as far as like putting out content is okay if you're a reseller in this niche, your options are what sold videos, thrift haul videos, bolo videos, tips videos, or you go live and uh, you talk about. We've all had four these talks. Things. Yeah, and so yeah, this, that's why this is a theme. Maybe a video a week from me, or or you know, I'm, I'm trying to get more into reels because it seems like that's more my thing because I can do a bunch of different impersonations and I'm just a generally goofy guy. No money um, on reels though. Yeah, well, I think in the future there will be because all these little social media platforms are just competing with each other. And once one's making money, the other, yada, yada. But um, but they have to, the only way they're going to make money is if someone wants to advertise. And nobody's going to advertise in a 20 second video because you're not paying attention to it. Like you're yeah. just like, ha! And then you go to the next one. Like, true. They're good for exposure, but you have to be funneling those viewers to a monetized platform, either like YouTube or like, gum road where you sell like you know you, dude you should this is what you should fucking do you should make like a basic guide about how to make money picking trash and sell it for 9.99 on gum road and then just funnel everyone there on all of your videos and that's like or on your out of your instagram profile or whatever because like that's like i i was talking to a dude who has i think it's like half a million tiktok followers maybe a little bit less than that but he was like, I get so many million views a month, blah, blah, blah. And like big numbers. I'm not like saying it was a small number, like big numbers. But he's only making like 800 bucks a month off of millions and millions of views because you only make like two cents per, per thousand views. As opposed to on YouTube where like a good retail arbitrage video is literally making a hundred times that. It's going to make 20 yeah. bucks per thousand views. And so I'm just like, I get it. I get they're different and you can't have the same expectations, but I don't know, man. I'm, I, I, I like the short form in, in regards to getting a new audience, but I do not like it for making money. I think it's a dead end. Yeah. I, I think uh, what I'm going to try, what I'm trying to do with the reels other than just be funny is just quick tips and something that directs people to like the YouTube or the, you know, something mm -hmm. else to where. Okay, well, he was funny in this 30 seconds. Let's see how horribly, how horribly he is in a live stream. <laughs> you know, something like yeah. that. Yeah, I think you're, oh, I mean, that's that's probably the best bet. It's just to use it as a, a funnel. Yeah, basically, that's, and um, I don't, I'm kind of, 
I don't want to say I've, I stopped watching a lot of reseller content because I still watch, like I have my same people that I watch and you know, if, if they start talking about the same stuff, then I'll go through it. But I watch a lot about investing and the one guy that I'm really into right now is like Mark Tilbury. If you've probably seen him. Um, he's all over. He's Dude, a half guy. of the, I think that a lot of those investment channels are just like bullshit. Like, I mean, yeah. no offense to Gary V, but like Gary V stuff where it's just like, common sense spoken in a very like inspiring or like unique way like i've yeah. watched a few of those graham stephen videos Ugh. and they're really good videos and really engaging but just like at the end of the video i don't feel like i learned anything and so i don't yeah. i mean i think i don't know i think it's the same thing where there's a, a certain kind of person who wants that like they want to be shown possibilities and like work through the process but that's not me. Like I have to have like, that's why my videos are kind of unique in the resale niche because like what I care about conveying is like information. What yeah. I care about seeing in a video is information. Like all the edits, all the jokes, all the quips, it makes it more watchable and I'm probably more likely to finish that video. But me personally, and I'm in the minority of viewers for sure when it comes to this, that does not make content bingeable for me. I just yeah. like, I just don't, I don't like, I feel like I'm not learning anything and I'm just like wasting my time. Well, I think that that speaks to more of you are a kind of person similar to me that doesn't need somebody to hold our hand. Just give us information. Yeah. We want to absorb information. I don't need you to hold my hand through it. And that, that falls in line with another thing that I really didn't want to bring up too much, but it's like the whole gurus of reselling. You know, like the... Hey, pay me, pay me $35 a month and I'll show you exactly what I do. And it's like, Hey, go to YouTube and type in exactly what you think you want to learn. And then there's probably a Blake video <laughs> or a million other people showing you how to do it for free. So what I, I, I think what I'm going to start doing in regards to monetization and like new ways of doing it is, uh, I think that I'm going to start doing, a, like a members only live stream on like Tuesday or something like that. Because I was trying to figure out how can you convey information without withholding information? How can you charge for information without withholding information? Yeah. Which is like really tough to do. Um, and like what I really don't like is like when someone says, like, here's an example. I'll get you ungated in DVDs for $1,000. Like, I hate that. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're selling someone like these hopes and like, Oh, like it's, it's almost like when you, if, when people do like Herbalife or whatever the fuck those MLMs are, they're like buy into the system and you'll be rich when really yeah. their main goal is to get you to buy in. So like the people who sell these thousand dollar DVD courses, their main goal isn't to get you ungated. It's to sell you the course. Yeah. And like, whatever it's their, it's their hustle. I don't, I'm not judging anybody's hustle. I'm just saying like, as a consumer, that's a big red flag for me. Um, and I think that like the people that I am willing to pay money to are the ones who like have an actual investment in my success beyond just like the financial, like they actually enjoy seeing people succeed. And I think like if people who are considered, you know, maybe, maybe not experts, but just like they know a lot about what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, can like charge for like open, you know, access to them for like an hour every day where it's like, Hey, like you're going to be guaranteed to have your question answered as opposed to a regular live stream where a lot like gets, gets lost. I think that that kind of like small group communication is what makes social media or what makes it like easily monetizable because I was thinking like doing one-on-one -on -one stuff is not really a good model for resale. Because yeah. the amount of money that someone who knows their shit would have to charge to one person would, is more than that person could probably afford. And doing like a thousand to one or ten thousand to one doesn't make sense either because the, the 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 questions people have are usually so nuanced that they're not generally applicable to the whole group. And so like why is everyone else watching? But I think the sweet spot is like 100 to 300 where like, and I've seen this done with like Patreon groups and discord servers and that kind of stuff. But like, I think that's like, I'll call it like a class size. That's like the ideal class size because mm -hmm. you can both give general advice 
on broad topics, but then as people take those broad topics and, you know, change it to their own circumstances, you can provide one-on-one -on -one advice without totally derailing everyone else's experience. And that's like, personally, that's like the, uh, like the difficulty, the, the balance I've been having a hard time finding in, in the content I'm trying to make. Yeah, it's, uh, <sighs> <laughs> I'm so I'm so scatterbrained when it comes to like doing this live was already stressful enough and that I haven't done any filming all week. I've I've literally just been concentrating on on finishing the the pest control stuff that I'm not really just don't want to do. Oh anymore. yeah. Um I mean, you, and you got to you got to sell that, dude. Yeah, this 10 a day and this 10 a day in May challenge like listing 10 items every day like it doesn't sound like it's a lot, but when like, so every day this week, except for today, from 9 a.m. to probably like 1030 at night, I'm doing pest control. And then I have an hour and a half to get home, get those items done before midnight to hit my thing, which, you know, today I'm going to clean a bunch so I can have the whole weekend ready to set it and forget it. But um, doing content's like on the back burner. So like doing those 30 second reels kind of kind of makes it where I can still get something out, but not have to film. And then also, I don't like filming in public because I'm always mm -hmm. though. But um, I have a yeah, random. I, I, I've tried to go ahead. I was gonna say I've tried to film two videos this week, but I just don't like. I, I just think they're boring, and so I don't want to finish them. Just like, just like I go to a, a thrift store and film the same thrift store and film myself buying the same things, and I'm just like, who the fuck cares? Like, who <laughs> wants to see me buy VCRs over and over and over again? And so I'm trying to like think of like okay how can I put a little spin on this and I have done every every single spin I feel like yeah. I can spin on for like I mean without but as an individual at least it's just like I don't know Rocky Mountain Resale says thrifting is super trendy right now it seems I think so too I think that you 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 look at like what's been happening in the past eighteen months with like people not working and that kind of shit as well as just like. Um, the amount of just like people are either on unemployment or they're working and just like not spending money because they're not going out. People seem to, despite like potentially bad economic numbers, there's a lot of people who have like disposable income. I read that credit card debt is down across the country by like 30% uh, over the past, since the lockdown started because everyone's just like paying off their debt and making more money. Yeah. And so I think that has to do with why thrifting is so trendy right now. Um, but you, uh, you know, it's it makes making content more difficult because, like, I'm competing. I feel like for views, I'm competing against channels who maybe might not be making like they're just they're focusing on making it more watchable and entertaining than making it more yeah. like useful. I think, more and like that's different. always gonna be, yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, Dana, my big. Yeah, I don't. I, it doesn't until you have your do it. I don't know what that means. I think it's a typo. Yeah, I, I don't know, talking about TikTok or or like making content, and maybe yeah. it doesn't until you have to do it. Maybe I don't know. But oh I, I yeah, get like, the general idea where like I don't. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't pay. I mean, obviously, with 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 doing uh, sponsorship with Hammock, I do make some sort of income with YouTube now and content creation, but it's not at the point where all the other stuff is way more important to me. And so if it's like, Hey, uh -huh. I gotta go, I gotta go dumpster dive. Oh, I should film. Like that doesn't even come into my mind. Like all I'm thinking about is I should be concentrating on dumpster diving because that's what's making the money or I should be concentrating at the bins mm -hmm. and not trying to, not trying to film. I need both hands so I can fight off these, uh, these crazy <laughs> Throw some bows. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't hold my phone and film or wear it on my, my chesticle mount and look like a, like a, like a nerd and elbow, you know, 50 year old Nigerian women. Dude, you got to, to. Shoot me in the head. <laughs> you got to wear, that's what Dante does. He wears a chest mount. I think it just like makes the, it makes the, the video feel so much more like you're there. It's um, like those, uh, the nearest those, bins. I say it's like those RPG games. Like those, those, like I see my, I see. the kids <laughs> Yeah. And I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> first person shooters. <laughs> yeah uh how much growth did i see from my from the reseller bracket 
um, a pretty, pretty awesome amount. Um, the trophy is off in my, I have a shelf right here that has all my vintage toys and it's in the middle of it as the display. I'm going to get a little, um, a light nice. to shine down on it. Um, very proud Ooh, of it. It's going to look good. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that, that I, you know, most people didn't take seriously. I, I just thought it was fun, um, to, to come out, to come out victorious when I, you know, I'm just a, a, a dumb dude from Texas <laughs> that just uh, <laughs> knows, knows how to uh, corral people into, into doing things that will potentially help me out. So that's really what I did. I reached out to my, you got it. Student. Yeah. I, I, I took it outside. You of get a lot reselling. of favors stored up. Yeah. I took it outside <laughs> of reselling. I hit up the, the music scene. I hit up the tattoo scene. I hit up, you know, friends and you know, I basically, I basically uh, pyramid triangled this thing into a victory. You know, they always say <laughs> your first customers, friends and family. So that's what I did. I said, Hey, go do this. What is it? Who cares? Just click my picture. You know, <laughs> uh, YouTube grew pretty quick. Um, <laughs> My big, my big problem on YouTube is just, I, I'm not consistent. Um, my content is, is scattered and, and I, if I don't feel like filming, I just don't do it. So, um, and I know that's, that is actually hurting me, but that's just that's bad. Yeah. You got it. You got to put out, that's, that's why I do the, the live streams or I'm getting back into doing them. I took like a month and a half off to see what happened to my channel. Uh, and like definitely the live streams, having that routine live stream helps like all my other videos um get served for people like in their recommended or whatever <laughs> yeah. dante says oh so you cheated <laughs> dante <laughs> if you're not cheating the you're not winning no. there was no rules <laughs> i created i created Did a I thousand see? instagram accounts just so i could sit there and vote for myself no. <laughs> <laughs> uh. No, that was uh they said did I see an amount? I think I I had about a thousand Instagram followers in increased, which is pretty huge. Uh and then I didn't see anything on YouTube really at all, any large bump. Yeah. But on Instagram well, it grew up, I, I don't I'm, I'm bad at Instagram though. I don't post enough. Once uh once we got you have to, to like post every fucking day. Yeah, well technically you're supposed to post uh at least four times a day. It's kind of like sharing on Poshmark. You're supposed to do it at the party times and i can't stand all of that <laughs> four so, instagram posts a day well you're About supposed to be what? engaging like two posts and two stories and then maybe a uh you know a little live or so. i don't know man it's 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 a complicated world to to try and keep up with all of this especially when it's not Ooh. your yeah <laughs> how do you run a business and post Four TikToks and four Instagrams and film a YouTube video, and you know how like it just seems like impossible, impossible. Yeah, you have to well, focus on like, all right, I'm gonna put reselling on the back burner. I'm gonna put content in the back burner every once in a while. Well, that's the thing is is um, the people that are the people that are focusing like that on Instagram that is their business. So that's what they're they're putting their you know. Uh, what it, what is it, Renzi? Now and then say always you throw fire on what's working. So if, if you're making all your money off of social media, then then this is not what you're focusing on, and that's why you have death piles and stuff like that. But um, I can't. I yeah, can't right. So I post when I can, and then you know I, I know I need to schedule, and part of that will come once I can remove the the brick and mortar of having to go out and do pest control and follow up calls and all this other stuff. And luckily Stacy takes care of a lot of the, like the calls and the annoying stuff that I can't stand. I just kill things. I show up and I kill things. <laughs> 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 that's, that's pretty much what Exter I do. I mean, yeah, you're an exterminator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do have some non reselling questions. Cause I wrote, cause I told you, I kind of wanted to do this like that show hot takes if you've ever watched that, but I want it to be like cold takes. Um, so if anybody doesn't know, you've done stand-up comedy. So I think that's another reason that we we kind of men mesh so well is because you you that was a, a lifetime ago, yeah. I know I was gonna I was gonna use the photo that I found because what's hilarious to me and and I've never like researched you, so it's funny that it came up as like the third search on Google. But when I typed in Walter Blake Knobloch, the third thing said net worth, which I thought was hilarious. 
So you've obviously done <laughs> something to, to become net worthy on Google. But if you just look I'm on, at your I'm on TV, man. I'm on yeah, TV. If, if you look at your photos, you scroll down through all these like young, clean shaven model type photos. You see one where you're like sitting on a chair doing comedy. And so that's why I was like, oh, I should I should bring <laughs> up that he that he used to do comedy. Do you remember like any of your bits? Like, do you remember like one? Like what was your style? Like who would you compare yourself to? Uh, it was a lot of like short stories that ended in one liners. Like some comedians are like relatable and some comedians tell jokes. And I definitely yeah. was like set up punchline and set up punchline. Um, so like real world stuff The, the you no like, like wordplay and like oh, okay. very like esoteric dumb topics. And it was like, I was basically like, like a hipster comedian but I was very vulgar uh, and that, that made it hard to, <laughs> to find yeah. a lot of audiences that liked me. Um, like it's the kind of thing where like the people who run the comedy shows would like me, but the audience would be like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Like, why is he making jokes about like Ro Roshark ink blots? And like, you know, then he, I, just like not, um, I only did it for like two or three years because the money wasn't there and you have to put in a lot of work doing the same, at least for most people, not everyone, obviously like you have some really famous comedians who just like make a new set every three months. But the majority of comedians who are like trying to make their way out of like the Midwest get one really good act. Like, you know, they get 10 good minutes and then they get a really good half hour and they keep doing that same act over and over and yeah. over and over and over and over again. And I, I didn't have the drive to do that. I had no desire at all to be telling the same jokes to fucking people who didn't get my jokes until yeah. I, you know, was able to have 40 minutes that I could headline for five years and then finally, like, become, like, you know, a writer for some sitcom in Los Angeles. That didn't seem like that I didn't want to do that. So I just kind of stopped and, you know, you can still make jokes on YouTube, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. The, the well, I was gonna say because you you said uh, you were you were just more vulgar. So do you do you feel like you hold back on your on your non live videos that you put on YouTube just because of monetization? Yeah, definitely. And also, um, it's I feel like I don't, especially in the beginning of a video, like if you swear or whatever. Um, that makes it more uh what's it called that makes it less likely to get like higher serving ads um but mostly it's just because i i want to have like a broader audience and i feel yeah. like there are some people who don't like swearing at all and they're never gonna like me but there's a lot of people who are okay with like a little bit of like vulgarity you know sprinkled in um, yeah. But I can't just be like cursing like a sailor because there are that for some people for a, a much larger portion than I would have assumed that, that they find that distracting. Yeah. I mean, to uh, me, they're all just words, but. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I definitely tone down my, my personality. I mean, you, you know, my, my other, my other, you know, social media. The, is your, so, you know, you know, my other the real friend. you. Yeah, you know the non try to get paid me, um, but uh, it's, the the metal lead singer. Yeah, it's it's tough at times because you see so much of the same stuff in the in the reselling community, or 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 I, this is going to be such a good segue in the in the reseller groups on like Facebook that you just want to like reach through the screen and just start smashing their head into their computer because like please stop asking or saying the same stupid thing, but. Um, the WPK Ultra Group on Facebook doesn't have a lot of that, and um, there's a little plug for that. Uh, I, I kick think out that, so many people. I was going to ask you how how much work is it to to handle that group and keep it the way that that you keep it. I try and make one post a week, and then I try and go through and read all the posts once a week. And when I read all the posts of the past week, that's when I go through and kick people out. Yeah. Because just like there are so many people who feel entitled to using this, like one of the few groups on Facebook that I've ever seen that like 
is not meant to be like you were kicked out <laughs> probably for flexing them are guns. you sure i probably blocked yeah, her um maybe <laughs> maybe i don't i don't think i kicked you out but maybe i did um it's uh so many people are just like i want to complain about like politics or like why is this happening with culture and just like okay yeah go somewhere where people give a shit about that like nobody yeah. nobody came to this facebook group about reselling to hear your very very just like polarizing opinion yeah. on like anything it doesn't fucking matter and no one's here for that so why are you doing it if no <laughs> one wants to hear your opinion it's probably a bad opinion. Yeah, like and it has nothing to do with reason. Like, oh, but what about like, what about like you know Galileo? He had an unpopular opinion. No, he fucking didn't. <laughs> there were you know, there's a difference between like a, an opinion that like, oh, the people I'm you know who the, the king doesn't like it, and like, um, you know, you have a whole group of people who follow you around who who, who like it. Like Galileo had students and schools. I, after his line of thinking, like he wasn't this like one lone guy being like, well, actually the fucking earth is a triangle. Like that's yeah. the kind of bullshit that I see people saying. And I'm just like, just because you're taking the contrarian point of view doesn't mean it's like unique or novel. It means yeah. that you're, you don't have the ability to be like intelligent or creative. And you're just going to the first thing that differentiates you from the group because you crave attention. That's like what I think about those people. And I just, they, they don't even get a warning. They're just gone. I just say, you're I'm not a... helping the group at all. Yeah. You're not providing value to anybody. You're just trying, you're a leech. You're a, a, an attention leech. And I hate people like that. Yeah. I, uh, every time I, I pop in there, you know, I, I'm always looking because, you know, I like to troll. So uh, I usually get like one, I'll get one. <laughs> I'll get like one troll comment in on somebody that's doing exactly what you just talked about. And then you'll come in there and like, they'll be gone. And I'm like, Oh, at least I got my comment in. <laughs> well, yeah. No. Then I just like delete the post. Cause I'm just like, why are people I'll go in there right now and we'll see it. What I hope that it's, it's like good right now. Cause I haven't, I haven't been, I haven't met my post yet this week. Well, hopefully well, everybody go. that's going live. Everybody I'm gonna pin that. Here is, uh, is is joining everybody that's in here? Go, uh, go hit it up. WBK Ultra. Go join the group. It's it's. I'm telling you, it's it's the best as far as is actual reseller content, um, and it's free. You just can't be, um, you know, your tagline. Don't be a shithead. Like I think I think when that when you came out yeah. with that, I was like, oh. He's not going to get a lot of people that are into that, but the people that know exactly what that means that maybe don't want to say it or just they feel it, they'll, they'll be like, yes, somebody said it. You know, I've, yeah, I've it looks that. like, I mean, there's like, it'd be like five or 10 posts a day and not, not, not a day, a week. I mean, and like, that's good. That's a good number because yeah. some of these Facebook groups have like hundreds of posts a day and there, there's no moderation at all. Well, not, yeah, not, and then the other thing is like the post will be, um, just horrible or they'll ask a question and then you give them your opinion and then they just want to have like a back and forth on why your response was horrible. Oh yeah. See, Dana just said the same thing. Yeah. They complain when you give them the real answer. It's just like, huh. you asked the question. Yeah. I'm just telling you what There's I not did. a lot of complaining. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think a, a lot of uh, a lot of complaining in this group here. No, if, yeah. I mean, do you do you ever? I, don't know. I mean, I'm going through was, all the posts. I'm I'm down to May twentieth. Yeah, no, it's there's it's a few been, there's a few guys who used to post. I think for the amount of people that are in the group, the the posting is the posting content stays good, and there's never really a lot of of craziness um, for whatever reason, anytime something happens big, like, you know, Trump, you know, people try to sneak in like, Oh, you know, my Legos aren't selling on Amazon cause Trump, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you have gas and stuff like that. But once you read, once you weeded all that stuff out and people just sort of like, okay, this is really just about reselling. Then it's been, uh, it's been awesome. 
what up, Paul? Wawa sucks. So uh, <laughs> I've been waiting to see his over name. Over the up. past <laughs> month, over the past month, there's been three thousand, about four thousand active members. Yeah, and the group has about seven thousand people. Yeah, I think a lot and of people the most. Just if like, you're curious, the most. What are you saying? Oh, I was going to say, I think most people that are in that group actually just read and, and keep up with what's going on. They don't really have, uh, they don't want to say Definitely. anything, make a post. They just want to learn, which is awesome because, um, you know, I, I know. That's what it's I'm, for. I feel I'm very good at my things that I do. And for the things that I'm not good at, I go to the, I go to that group and I look for it. Yeah. Oh, I, I the most Trump popular time to go on the group is 9 p.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You know what? Uh, Whoa, so what I, intro, says Philly Flipper. <laughs> oh, dude, I've been, I've been waiting for his name to pop up this whole time. <laughs> it's uh, funny. The intro is just like an like a minute and a half of us not knowing what's going on. Yeah. Well, that's probably how I'm going to do every live if I do this weekly. I'm going to make it a point. To just, <laughs> the first two minutes be just the opposite of what you're supposed to do on YouTube where you're supposed to like get to the point in 15 seconds and then have your intro and then get to the, it's just going to be horrible for a minute and a half and then we'll start. <laughs> <laughs> it's called anti-content. It's yeah, big, big but, in 2021. Yeah. I'm just ahead of the curve. That's what it is. The op the opposite of good content. <laughs> um, hey, everyone give it a, give, give it a thumbs up right now. I just gave it a thumbs up. Sweet. We're at 10. What the heck? Nine. Eight. Ten. There we go. Back to ten. That's probably Stacy. She's probably on like unlock. She'll be the first thumbs down, I guarantee you. Oh. <laughs> she likes to keep me on my toes. <laughs> <laughs> Why would she do that? Oh, because uh, I'm a maniac. No thumbs down here. Um what would you say is we've talked, we've pretty much covered every question I was going to ask you. So I was just say, um, just cause I want to know, what would you think your worst buy has ever been that you thought was a home run? Uh, usually it's never the things I think are home runs. It's like, I haven't bought anything. I should just buy something. Cause I'm here. Oh, yeah. Those are the bad buys. Yeah, it's never okay. like because if something's a home run, you're seeing like cops and that kind of shit, so you yeah. know it's gonna be good. But like you know, two or three years ago, I bought a bunch of clothes that was dumb. I I, I have an issue with throwing things away that I can't sell for a lot of money because I'm like, oh, it's worth like ten bucks, but I'm like, I don't want to list it for ten bucks, and so there's like a gap between like what I'm willing to work for and what I think is valuable. And so, like, the issues I have are not with buying, but with just, like, processing inventory and, like, being smart about it, you know? Yeah. Oh, I've definitely, Knowing I've what definitely to throw that. away and what to, what to keep. Like, yeah. or, or, like, actually, that isn't even it, because I, I know what to do. I just don't do it. Like, I know what I, where I should be at. But yeah. I just, like, don't. I, I have these like hoarding tendencies where I'm just like, no, like things could get tough and I could be thankful. I have this $10 action figure. Like, what are you talking about, Blake? That's insane. Yeah. Uh, that's my like brain how my so mind works. Spectrum. Yeah. My brain's on the other spectrum with that. So it's, I'm like, have I used this? Have I worn this? Have I touched this in the last six months? No, out of here. <laughs> ha. Yeah, I need to have more of a mentality like that. Like everyone in my family is like everyone, like my my grandparents, I guess, because they like grew up in like the Great Depression, and I think it just like skipped my parents and then went on to me. I have like a Great Depression mentality where okay. I'm just like hold on to everything. You might you might need these bits of string. Like you could make a you know you could tie them together and make one big string. Like what? And then flip it for a for a million man. dollars. Yeah, I even, yeah, I even, no, for, for 25 cents. I even weaned out my like my Simpsons collection because I just one day I was I, I was looking at it. And I was like, this is too much. You're almost 40. <laughs> so I, I, made well, I mean, a, hey, man, good for you for for getting for getting rid of that. Well, I I, uh, I made a lot on eBay and I sold it. So it worked. It worked out pretty well. 
How much uh, did you get for it? Uh, $90 free shipping. And it was, it was about 90% plush and it just went to, uh, it went to San Antonio. So it wasn't very expensive. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. But then yeah, I have one like, of the good things about living in Texas, probably. Yes. The, the, the worst thing about living in Texas is shipping anything to zone eight, which is Oregon. Anytime that pops up, because all my listings are free shipping. So anytime that pops up, I'm just like, oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> but I don't um, do free shipping unless it's in a first class, first class, or it's uh, going to fit into a flat rate, something or other. Yeah. So one of the, one of the, one of the biggest like savings for me right now is finding out the, just put jeans in a poly bag and then you can shove that poly bag in a, fra- a flat rate envelope and it'll fit. Like, as long as they're not like big boy jeans. You can get up to like a 40, 40 inch waist jeans. You can fold them up to fit in there. So seven eighteen to ship anywhere in the U.S. Put them in a. Put when I used to sell jeans, I would put them in a food saver to get all the oh, air out. Nice. <laughs> and it, and then you can ship anything. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Mountain said your Dollar Tree videos are your most popular. You stop doing those because the market isn't there, or do you just not like making that kind of content? So the market. I mean, it's always going to be changing what is in demand, right? But the market is always going to be there in the sense of like $1 into $10 is a pretty easy flip. But the reason I don't do it as much, and I probably should do it more if I was committed to YouTube, and I'm not really. But if I was, uh, I would do that. But the reason I don't do it is because it gets boring for me. Like how many fucking videos about me? So I could do a video about Dollar Tree soap, about Dollar Tree toothpaste. About I did both of those. About books. Um, about toys, about cleaning supplies, about DVDs. So that's six right there. Like, do I have to go through the whole goddamn store in every single section? Or should I just yeah. do like family dollar flips or like dollar? Ge- Cause I have a dollar general video that actually predated all of the dollar tree videos that has like a quarter million, uh, dollars or, so- or dollars. I wish a quarter million views. Um, and so like, I, what I the reason I can keep doing it is because I know that it brings in new people to reselling and that kind of stuff and entrepreneurship, but it's like disheartening when they don't want to see the real content that I produce. They just want like the um, you know, the popular stuff that's meant to be yeah. consumable and not meant to like convey information as much. I think on Dollar Tree, so uh, <laughs> you know, I started selling like VCRs and stuff like that in the beginning. And then I, I tried to do the, the retail arbitrage, got brick seek, did all that, drove to a million Walmarts to find two products. And I just realized like, this isn't my thing. Um, and I think with your Dollar Tree videos. Not me either. Yeah, I, I hardly do any. Yeah, with your Dollar Tree videos, the way you would have to do it is so you're not doing the same thing is you would basically have to do another, let's say, soap video, but show people that, hey, it's not just a one off. Like you can do this on a regular basis. But. Yeah, a, you have to, you know, you constantly be checking Dollar Trees, and it's just like I would rather constantly be going to thrift stores where I know that the inventory is different almost on an hourly basis, depending on what stores you go to. Stacy said steak. Remember when you did the yeah. how to cook a Dollar Tree steak? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I do want to make more cooking videos, but my kitchen has like terrible lighting, um, and so like. There's not, it's just too small and it's bad lighting, but hopefully in the near future, I can have a larger, brighter kitchen setup to do more cooking stuff. Like, that's what I want to do is make more, like, if I'm going to make like content that's not like directly related to making money, it's going to be about things that I really like genuinely care about. Um, yeah. I like to cook and grill a lot. So, so it'd be that. Um, but just like that's a whole nother, it's like a whole uh, nother thing just because. It's like Paul Cantu here in Houston. He uh, he would always like throw in like planting videos on his on his reselling channel, and and people weren't having it. So he created an entire new YouTube channel called Plan Two, where it's just about him and his his you know horticulture or whatever. It's How's called. that doing? I don't know because I'm not into it, but I'm sure he has more subscribers on it than I do. <laughs> I just looked it up. I am going to tell you if my uh oh my computer just froze, so I'm not going to tell you. Got no, you. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> like he made a he made a post or something about it, or like snuck it into one of his videos. Like, hey, since y'all don't like my planting videos, I created Plan Two. Go subscribe if you're into that kind of stuff. 
I should subscribe. I like that kind of stuff. I like horticulture. Yeah. Well, I like that he. Uh, I like what he does with like beater like Nikes and stuff. Is he has like terracotta paint and he will paint them until they harden and then he puts like fake plants in them and like sells them as like a shoe planter. Like he does that at all the trade huh. shows when he that's goes and like meets up with Slobby Robbie and them. That's that's kind of like one of his his drawing points at his booth. Other than just being a, a, a very odd. Do you know a lot about person. Slobby Robbie? Uh not not too much. I mean, we used to we used to chat it up like before the show and everything like that, and uh, he seemed like the weirdo he is. I, I don't. So I don't know when he's lying or when he's telling the truth. Yeah, I, like, I don't know how to like separate the character from the real person. I don't. Think I don't he know him. Either. I think I've talked to him like like one time on Instagram. I don't think. Yeah, because like he I was talking to... about how he was like just in jail. Yeah, well, I think he's talking about he was in social media jail. He got he got like yeah, but off. like say that. Yeah. So well, no, you have to make it say that flex. specifically. You have to flex that way. It's more of a oh, you know, free slobby. You can start that whole trend and stuff like that. But what it was was it had something to do with uh, with like his bootlegs or something like that. Yeah, that's why I thought he was in really in jail. Yeah, no, um, I don't think they. It, it was it was it was just social media, but I don't think he. Um, I don't think he can separate himself from the from the character. Honestly, I mean, I don't know him personally, but I don't think he could uh, do it. No, I. <laughs> he said we were. Now, gonna that's have, an uh, interesting. He said we were going to have bad boys playing since we're the bad boys reseller, but that's actually someone else's thing. But I was I refused to change it because it wouldn't be very bad boy of me to change my uh, my the, thumbnail uh, just because someone else has it. Oh, social media jail does is greater than. Well, real also jail. that's been a thing like for years and years and years and years. Social media. Oh yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I can only tell you about it's, county. Uh, Federal, Paul Plan and, uh, 2 has 3,440 subscribers. I told you he's <laughs> planning to have double what I have. <laughs> Not social media jail? No, yeah. I've never <laughs> been to social, never been yeah, to social the media The videos jail. look really good, but nobody gives a shit about them. Yeah. Well, I mean, he knows, he knows how Why to, the fuck do people not watch good videos? I have no idea, because I, I only make bad ones, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, <laughs> so, like a video like that that's like well edited and conveys information why is that not doing as good as like you know him making a, a thrift haul video where he's just like making weird noises and like using slang a lot oh man you know speaking of, speaking of weird noises i learned from my buddy that doing those um those noise loop videos on youtube is big money. Like it's just, you put up like a stock photo of let's say, what rain. the fuck is the noise loop video? Okay. So let's say that I, oh, wanted to, yeah. I wanted to add screaming to one of my videos. I would just put up a video. That's just a black screen and, or it shows like somebody screaming like a stock footage. And then it's just a loop of different screams. That's like a big business. How, that, but they have, they have to be your screams though. It can't just be like, you can't just like steal Screams from like movies or whatever. No, but basically what you, you couldn't at least monetize. I mean, maybe, maybe you can, but, but you can screen record another video, uh, screen record another videos screaming or sleeping or snoring or whatever sound, and then put a different picture on it and produce it as your own. At least that's what I've seen they, that, that happens. Because how do you, huh. uh, how can you trade? Yeah. There's it? always that's the matter of two of like, if you're going to get caught. Yeah. Yeah. Like who's who's who who can who would catch you in that? Probably no exactly. one. Even if it is like technically illegal, there's no chance you're gonna get caught doing it. Well, yeah. So I mean, are you I gonna make I... some some loop videos then? No, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's I, I could I have enough I have enough age groups to where I could do a different year child cry loop. I'm like, well, this is what a 20 month old crying sounds <laughs> like. This is a four year old. This is. <laughs> 
but it's too much work. You I'd should. Have to I mean, like, I mean, why not? Yeah, it's too much work. Uh, How is it too much work? It, that's like no work. Yeah, yeah. Except making them cry because I'd want it to be genuine. So that's a lot of spankings. But <laughs> <laughs> just like, that hey, I'm up... going to give you this ice cream. No, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. This is authentic crying. This isn't staged. <laughs> Be genuine this is about child it. Child abuse cry. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, see that's uh, what would happen. All, all of a sudden CP you, you, you yes. <laughs> This is the real yeah. this is the Man, sound of real cops away... in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, so all that. Uh what I what I I thought about that too. What I wanted to do is live stream my backyard with like animals and squirrels. Um oh. just like what they do throughout the day. And I never got around to it because new channels can't live stream for more. Or There's like rules about that. But I was like, man, like there's gotta be people who just like, want to like, like put this in front of your pets when, when you're gone and they can pretend that they're outside with squirrels. Kind of depressing. I guess you think about it like that, <laughs> but like those videos have to make some money too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like cute dog videos. I'm just like, man, what if I just put the camera on and just did a whole live of, my dog sleeping because he snores so loud and just people make, will just watch him make a second channel make a well, channel the, called animal noises i don't fucking know yeah well one thing you i think was it's a youtube channel I, animal well i mean apparently if you search uh cows mooing uh look at the views they're like the top videos but uh that's once, insane i, I just looked I was, up I was thinking of one channel that I could do, and it's only because I've dedicated 10 years of learning all of this garbage, is just do a side channel where I'm literally just teaching people how to do professional pest control at home, buying the same chemicals from the same company. Of course. I've been telling you that for years, dude. Years. <laughs> but I, I've been telling you that. That's so, There's I, so much money in that. I know. And then everybody in the, and then my chemical rep will be like, dude, I can't use you anymore. But I'm like, well, if I send people, cause you could buy the same products I use as long as you're not using them on anyone else's house, but your own. Cause that's when it becomes, you're now trying to be a business. Uh, you know, you can spray your house, you can spray your mom's house, but you can't go spray, you know, your cut, you know, guy five streets down. That's got a bug problem, but it's just, I don't yeah, know. Just say that that's, that's your disclaimer. Yeah. I don't want to turn so into the I, new... I looked up. A... I don't want to I was turn into say, the I new... looked up animal sounds for children. <laughs> animal sounds for children. Twenty amazing animals. It was uploaded July twenty third, twenty fifteen. Guess how many views it has? Probably uh, over 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 three hundred thousand. You're gonna be low. Oh wow! You're gonna be okay. low no matter what number you guess. I'm pretty sure. One point five million. Oh, oh my God! It's lower than that. <sighs> On one hundred and thirty million. What? Five hundred thousand. One hundred and thirty point five million views. It's got two hundred and sixty-five thousand, hundred thousand thumbs up, and one hundred seventy-four thousand thumbs down. Comments have been turned off. This must just be like a very toxic, toxic environment. Oh, yeah. I probably got I, real uh, there. How's that sound? Can you hear that? <laughs> Can I use that as my next video intro? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, my God. But you see what you can make this money on. what I now. can't compete against. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what this, the this video has. They have this this single video has twenty times more more than twenty times twenty two times almost more views than my entire entire YouTube channel. And it's sheep doing their thing. Wow. And horses. And horses. Oh, well, they've got two animals. No wonder they have So you're going to start a, uh, you're gonna start a <laughs> sound loop? 
So sound channel, everyone. Yeah. The reseller, start a sound <laughs> channel. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Were those real sheep, or is that just someone that can really do a good impersonation? <laughs> He's rethinking his whole Better. life right now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I used oh, to man. think that, like, if you were really smart and did really smart things, you'd be successful. And no. that might be true. But it's not the ex the exclusive way to be successful. You can make fucking videos, go bah, bah, <laughs> you know, a dog barking, and uh, let's say it pays a dollar per thousand views. Very low CPM. Yeah. Divided I'm by one thousand. I'm gonna screen record you uh, you doing that noise for uh, a future reel. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. So one point no. One mil yeah, one point three million. Is that right? Jesus Christ. No. One hundred and thirty thousand. <laughs> so they probably made over a hundred thousand fucking dollars. Off sheep and horse noises. Uh, <sighs> yeah. So once uh honestly, once um jackass came out and they got real popular for doing the same stuff that literally every kid from the 80s and 90s did they just filmed it uh i was like just okay. for fun i was like oh cool the world is definitely going to be changing because that's what is the generation is going to grow up and be like oh well they made all this money doing this stuff so then then boom social media came and now you have have people that that you know ride their bicycle across the country filming it to deliver a penny to somebody and make, you know, $247,000 for that video. And you're like, well, I mean, he did ride across the country. I'm going to so. tell you their top videos. So this Ox, Oxbridge baby is the channel animal sounds. One thirty million. Three little pigs animated 25 million. Let me go down a little bit. Learn to talk. Complete DVD by Oxbridge Baby. Seven million. What the fuck is this? <laughs> this is just like low quality content that targets children. I feel like I've ruined your totally entire okay. day. <laughs> You're just gonna go down this wormhole of, I'm gonna, hey, I'm Blake, and this is my new animal sound. Mom. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> yeah, that's the video. <laughs> Go kill yourself. Uh, that's how oh, I'm going to end on my new videos. <laughs> that's the video. Through, just walk into traffic. <laughs> uh, there's so many good screen records from this uh, this live. 500,000 subs. Holy crap. That's yeah. what. I'm talking to uh, a company right now who wants to go through all my live streams and take out clips and use those clips to make courses. So like actually useful stuff, not me being, you know, the yeah. way I am right now, but just like actually useful information. And they're like, yeah, we'll go through all of your live streams and we'll take out the clips and make them into courses. And we'll only take a cut, a small cut of the profits. And I'm just like, do you know how many hours of content I have on YouTube? Yeah. Because you, you know how much of that and how much of that is just like useless or just like me yelling or just like, you know, hitting a bell or blowing a bugle. Like, I don't I don't think you know what you're getting yourself into, but they certainly don't care. So you're, you well, might be I, seeing some cheap courses from me in the future, yeah. which would be nice just to like use the things I already have for free on YouTube and just like make like a couple bucks off it. That would be awesome. Yeah. It'd be funny if they just use like older clips when you were like clean shaven and then they mix it in with all of a sudden you have a beard and then you're back to clean shaven and then like the edits all wonky. <laughs> that would at least be, be funny. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Oh wow. He's been saying the same thing since he was <laughs> not much clip. consistency. <laughs> I haven't been doing, I've only been doing resale content since 2017, I think. Before that, About what four years? Your, before that, what was your uh, content? Did you do just? I had a bunch of, 
a bunch of like sketches and skits that I did, just like one person sketches. I did like vlogging for a little bit. Um, I did before that, like, like way before that, like circa 2010 to 14, I did stand up comedy stuff. But I took all those down because of all the offensive things that I said. And I didn't want um, that yeah. to be used against me if the TV show it. took off. The TV yeah, show didn't, didn't take it. off. So I just wasted my time. You didn't want 2021 to happen <laughs> where everybody is like, um, Chris, uh, 15 years ago, you played a show in uh, San Diego. And on the microphone, you said, <laughs> like, yeah, probably. I don't know. It's 15 you, years You stuck ago. your guitar up someone's butt. Yeah. Well, <laughs> did I... the end of your guitar and you, you stuck it up someone's butt. But what did do you I think at least... about that now? Did I strum it? Was I in tune? You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they paid 15 bucks. They got their money's worth. Yeah. I mean that cost somebody that cost an American like a thousand dollars in Amsterdam. You got it for free. <laughs> but that's just that's, the way. My- what I noticed though about like the whole idea of ca- the whole idea about cancel culture is the only people who get canceled are the people who portray themselves as being like holier than thou. You know, yeah. if if you're just like people like you and I who don't act like we're like you know super i don't even want to say like super progressive because like i probably you and i are a lot more accepting of people than most people who identify as like progressive just because we don't judge people i don't i mean i'm i don't i don't think you do either and so i i hesitate to use that term but i think it it correctly captures what i'm trying to say everyone can kind of like read between the lines yeah it's the people who are like that who are like calling everyone out for their, you know, bullshit cultural faux pas yeah. uh, and then doing it themselves. And it's like that level of hypocrisy that people are able to use to fuel their hatred. Whereas like, I don't think you and I are hypocrites. We're not, you know, we're not like um, saving the world or anything, but we're not lying about what we're doing. You know, we're, we're, we're both very genuine people. And if you're genuine, it's hard to cancel someone who's genuine because the only people who follow them already know what they're getting into. That's why you don't see like, and I'm not comparing us to like, (laughs) like real racists, but like you don't see white supremacists getting canceled because the people who follow them already fucking know that it's like their thing. Like who was that? There was, this is a, a, I forget his name. He was some dude from like Montana and he was like a straight up like real white nationalist. He had a little bit of, of fame during Trump's election or whatever because someone punched him. It's just things that I Ben-Gipira? don't give a shit about. Yeah. Every I mean, no, 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 no. I'm he, he's like a Ben Shapiro is a little smarmy bastard, but I, think I don't I think that many folks would call him like a what I'm sure they would, but not. It's it some, guy, it's like, something, and then there became this whole like debate of like, yeah, and then it was like, can you punch a Nazi? And I was like, I don't know. Are you gonna do it? Like, yeah. I don't give a shit if you do, as long as you're not. It's just the kind of thing where like this hypothetical makes no sense because yeah, yeah. you're on your computer. Like, it's a lot different when you're walking and someone's you know like, like walking down the street and you see somebody doing bullshit like that, as opposed to just like hypo- hypothetically talking about it. But I. The guy, what the fuck? This guy, he's a he's a piece of shit, and no one likes him except for the people who are trying to like justify their own like weird racist views. And yeah. you can't cancel that because everyone already fucking hates him, except for the losers who follow him. And so it's just like the only folks who are getting canceled are the opposite of that. Um, as as just like terrible as that guy was. At least he wasn't a hypocrite. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, at least he was consistent in his views. And like that kind of, you can be a terrible person, but as long as you're genuinely terrible, like um, this, there's something that like a Marilyn Manson quote that I really like a lot is like, you only need to have 1 million people in the world like you and you'll be famous forever. And yeah. like, that doesn't take into account what, what you're famous for, what it's good for. But if like that, if notoriety is your goal, because you have, you know, 
stunted personal development or whatever, then like, I, I understand, I, I don't agree with what they do, but I understand it's like, it's a logical progression to do yeah. that kind of stuff because you know, like, because I'm going to attach myself to something so horrible, there's always going to be a market for me, no matter how much hate I get or how low the level of output my content is because people are here, not for me, but for this like extremely unpopular opinion. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, that's, that's the thing. Uh, I, I, there's been multiple, again, I'm going to bring up serial killers. I, I, they kind of fascinate me, but um, a lot of, the yeah, serial exactly. Killers, you, serial killers is a great like, example. If I'm going to, if I'm, I'm still famous, you know, it doesn't matter. You, you can get famous. It just doesn't, you know, Richard Spencer. Yeah. I, I was thinking it was either going to be Shapiro or Spencer. Cause I think both of them have been punched, but one of them was more, uh, that's the guy's more, name. Yeah. One, one was more captivating because it was like Who everybody. Punched saw. Ben Shapiro. I mean, I don't know I, anything about Ben Shapiro except he's like a little guy who has a, a podcast. I know he's like five foot four. Yeah, so, like, who would punch a five foot four guy? You're, you're talking to somebody who's punched a lot of people in his day. <laughs> I, have you, have uh, you, but have you, do you, you, I have too, but I've never punched someone who's five foot four. Like, there's, they, they're not a, a, a threat to anyone. So, you you're, so you're, a, you're a heightist. That's what it sounds like. You guys heard it first on Flip the World's Channel. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> like Knobloch is a height. Do you know how not... short or how tall, rather? <laughs> he won't punch the someone. Shortest five person four. in my family. I. It's like punching out. Oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the shortest person in my family is six foot two. So and and that's he he's like a shorty he like he's short we make fun of him for, for being so short and so just like if I see someone who's like talking shit to me who's five foot four a man or anyone for that matter <laughs> the last thought in my head is I'm gonna Bunch attack you. this person because I might kill them I don't want to go to jail for punching a five foot four person you just bop on the top of the yeah bop on the head you just like settle down now. <laughs> <laughs> hey. so the shortest person uh, in your family is six two where what part of of norway or or where vikings live are is your family from the northern part of norway i uh, you had to i knew it was from the land of giants i mean you guys are probably the ones that put those giant swords yeah. in the mountain holy crap that was that was uh I looked up, I did a 23andMe a few years ago, back before you had to give your real name when they were first starting off. And um, I'm Eastern European and Norwegian are the two biggest things. Short people feisty. <laughs> you wanna, I, was, I was typing it, but I was just saying. What are they going to do, you know? Dante, St Stacy's five, five feet, five foot one in shoes. So, yeah, she feisty. <laughs> See, I always think about that's like, the thing uh, too. I've been stabbed by an ex girlfriend, and dude, just right like, what what am I going to do back to her? Like, punch her? Like she's you know like, I just don't. I don't know. It's not. I don't. I guess everyone should know that I'm like a very large person. And when you're a large person, you don't have the same ability to retaliate because you might kill people. Yeah, it's I have just a, uh... not the same. I have uh, I have a good friend in Laredo who uh, we call him Blocker. Um, he's six nine five forty, and uh, he's a uh, obviously. I think a, I know who that dude is on Instagram. I think I think. Uh, yeah, I think he big. voted for you in the wrestler bracket, and and I was like, holy fuck! He he does a lot of hammer workouts with like the forty pounds. Yeah, thing. forty pound hammers. Yeah, he had them custom built for him because he's so big. Uh, and he has a complete bodysuit tattooed. So it's like even more of like, I always tell him like, you should have been a professional wrestler. Um, but of course he's a, he's a bouncer and, and he's told stories of like having to break up drunks and just like face palming them and picking them up and escorting them out. But he can't hit anybody cause he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll kill them. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was, I, I was a bouncer in college and the rule, the rule they gave us was you can't, you can't, um, your arm had to be extended. So you could clothesline or you could like 
I guess, potentially do this. But as soon as you bent the elbow, that was against the rules. Because yeah. that's when you're going to start, like, really hurting people, I guess. Well, that, I don't yeah, know. well, that's when it becomes an actual, like, assault versus more of you can get away with, like, I was just trying to defend myself and create space. It's yeah, like, uh, I, I mean, yeah, but that was, that's, probably, that's what it was, probably. It's a, it's all those weird little legal caveats. Like when I, when I got, uh, when I got certified to be a commissioned officer to, to work with the, the NFL team here, the first thing they taught us was if you have to draw on, on someone, walk towards them as you're shooting them, because if you're, I'm sorry, walk away from them as you're shooting them, because if you walk towards them, it looks like you're the instigator. But if you're walking away shooting, it looks like you were scared for your life. I'm like, wow, you're just <laughs> teaching people how to kill themselves. That is ridiculous. How to kill other people. This is crazy. There's I don't so do anymore, many, the so many of those dumb little loophole caveats. Oh, yeah. I would never, ever be a bouncer again. I did it when I was like 22 or 23. Yeah. 21 or 22. Um, and it was just like, you know, when someone, it, what it was is it was dudes in the football team at Eastern Michigan. So I must've been 22 or 23. Um, we're bouncers in Ann Arbor, which is like the rich, you know, town across town. Um, and they would have dudes who couldn't show up to work or whatever. And I would just fill in occasionally. So I only did it like five or five or seven times, but just like not, not fun work, really, really annoying. I thought it would be cool. I was like, I'll meet girls, all this stuff. No, it's like the worst job ever. Anything yeah. where you have to deal with people who are drunk and tell them what they don't want to hear is the worst job ever. No, honestly, yeah, that's that's so. I've done I've done a lot of security and bounce work, and that's exactly you're like, oh man, I'm gonna meet these people. And I'm like, no, you end up dealing with the people that you want to avoid at all costs, the drunks, and the, that's why I, I did Uber. Uh, I drove for Uber for like maybe four or five months, and I was like, this sucks. Everybody getting in my car is drunk, and they're annoying. And I don't want them in my car. <laughs> and then yeah, I come home. I, I, I would come never home, do that. I, I would. Ne- I mean, the, like, uh, oh. the, I come home with the back seat has a bunch of glitter in it, and Stacy be like, "Uh huh, who were you driving around?" So you know, I just got tired of dealing with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny! Oh my but I, god! I, I also, you know, I, I also even worked, thought about that. I worked at a uh, uh, this one. This one's hard to like explain, but. If you don't know what these are, I worked at a, uh, a Jack Shack or a viewing room, an adult viewing room for like a year um, in between. Like, oh, being gross. On, Why yeah. would you do that? In between being on tour, um, it was just a job that our singer got. And he's like, hey, Dude, man, that's disgusting. It was. It paid a thousand a week, though, which is when you're just trying to, like, save up money until the next tour. That's a quick way to get it. But yeah, so basically the viewing room was open from 7 a.m. to 4 a.m. the next morning. And then we would shut down, kick everyone out, and I'd put on like a space suit and I'd go back there with bleach and clean everything. Yeah. And so when people hear that I used to work in an adult bookstore or an adult movie store, they're like, oh man, I bet it was awesome. You're just surrounded by all this all the time. And I'm like, it was the worst. Who would ever- say it's awesome? <laughs> I used to write. Uh, I used to write stories about it. And uh, those in people local. who said it was awesome, <laughs> don't talk to them anymore. Those people are <laughs> fucked up. Those are not the kind of friends you want to be around. They don't understand yeah. the I, world, uh, or they're just fucking gross. Yeah. Well, you know, the music scene has a lot of gross people in it. But I had to. Uh, I had to. I had to fight off a, a heroin addict with a needle sticking out of his arm. Uh, it was fun times, man. I mean, when I was I was young, so Dude. it was fun. It's a cool. Ex- it's, it's something I can uh, I can always tell people. Comedies like, hey, like, like that too. Yeah, I'm like, hey, I did that. These things happened. Would I recommend it? Hell no. <laughs> but I have it in my little book of things there's, I've done. There's so many perverts in comedy. Oh yeah, I mean, that's. I mean, you go. I think most of the 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 big com- comedians, especially in the male category, are really just perverts that just figured out it i can just make jokes about it it'll at least suppress way to make money off of it yeah, oh, yeah. It'll, it'll suppress the urge to actually do you know it's like it's like somebody that goes to the shooting range and practice shooting because they just have a desire to shoot somebody or something like that i don't know it's serial killers it's, it's a whole different line of thought but um 
We're a little over on time. Or like I, like I, dissect I, squirrels in their backyard. Dude, yeah, those people that like got into dissecting animals in high school, I seriously think that we should just all check up back up on them where they are now because I'm sure that they've dissected something else. Um, I think it's just yeah, cuz uh, I remember yeah. when they put that baby pig on the slab in front of me, I was like, "Nope, I'm out." Boom, F. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the smell still. I threw up. That's why I was uh, like, because nope, they had us blow into a straw into the end of the lung. The- and I accidentally sucked in and I sucked in like dead pig formaldehyde. Yeah, it was the most disgusting. I was in like fourth grade too. And I just ran out of the hall and I threw up. I threw up in yeah. school so much. Just yeah. like because. I don't know why. Oh, it only happened twice, but both times it was very dramatic. The other time I threw up, I made an enemy for life, and I didn't nice. know it. But this guy hated me. Um, we were in eighth grade, and there was this guy named John. I'll just say his name because no one's going to fucking know him. John Lautner. And um, he was a weird kid who wore like his karate outfit to school. Like, did you have someone like that in, in middle school, like a karate? They were just fucking kind of weird. And oh, yeah. our, it was in shop class, and I was terrible at shop class. I failed shop class because I just didn't have the coordination. I was just like a six foot four, like 240 pound eighth grader who was just like, didn't know how to move his own two, two feet. Um, and so our final project was making a balsa wood airplane. And so the frame was balsa wood, and then you use like a very thin paper to like make the wing structure and, and allow it to have more surface area to get lift and all that bullshit. Um, and mine sucked; it flew like eight feet. But John's was really good. I mean, really, really good. He put a lot of work into it. His miter cuts were a plus. Um, and it was the last day we were going to throw all our planes. And I was sitting next to him, and I was like, boy, I don't feel so good. And we had our planes on, like, the desk. And I, like, um, go to get up, and, like, my leg hits the desk, so I can't get up. And I lean kind of forward, and I throw up projectile all over his balsa wood airplane that he spent, like, months trying to <laughs> trying to make and him. And I ran out of the room, and I threw up again all across the uh, the door. And I opened the door and I ran out, but the kids wouldn't leave the, the school, uh, the classroom for like until it was all cleaned up. And it was the last class of the day. So they like all missed the bus and John Lautner's parents like couldn't come pick him up. So he just had to sit in his karate fucking vest covered in vomit. Didn't get to fly his plane for like two hours after school ended and nobody would talk to him because he smells like vomit. And I didn't even know I did this to him, but he hated me. Still does to this day, probably. I don't fucking know. Dude, you should totally Facebook search this dude. No, I don't just, still do subscription boxes. Just send the uh just I don't the, want uh, to because what if he shows up at my house with a fucking knife? And he still has the karate gi on with the puke stain. <laughs> oh this is amazing. Dude, that sounds funny until it happens. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Everything's funny. That's until one of my many you. enemies. Uh, Dana, no. Um, the, the oh, fetal oh shit. What? He is still alive. He lives in your city. <laughs> I have a Facebook request from him. Oh, nice. Dude, just accept it and send him the puking emoji. And then nothing else. So Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> Does he look like a serial killer? You should just screenshot it and post it in your IG stories and be like, this he's guy got a bunch of guns. He looks like he's married, so that's good. Oh, he's done well. <laughs> looks like he's Forward. married. Uh, but he's got a really, really big beard and really long hair. Um, oh, so and it's the kind of beard him. where it's not like years where it's like cool. It's like Hillman beard. Like that's the kind of beard I grow, where it just yeah. goes straight out to the sides. Okay, like when so I grow a beard, I look like fucking Fidel Castro. So he probably has like an underground bunker, and he's a doomsday prepper. That's that's what I'm taking from this. <laughs> yeah, he looks like that. He looks like somebody who knows how to make who knows how to make hillbilly dynamite. 
Awesome. Uh, Dana, no, uh, the pig, the pig thing is not when I, I went vegan. I've only been vegan probably about like three years now. Uh, I went vegetarian 17 years ago. And when I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I actually, um, contracted, um, Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a form of muscular dystrophy. I woke up, I went to bed normal. And the next morning I woke up, I had no muscles from the waist down and I was in a wheelchair for like a year and a half, yada, yada, yada. And after all the, all the testing and what? everything, yeah. After all the testing, um, the doctors came back to it had to have been from an infected, diseased chicken that I had eaten that caused the central nervous system, which I still have. I'm not eligible for the flu shot and I can't get the uh, the covid vaccine because they could actually cause it to come back out of Jesus remission. Christ, dude. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I have daily like leg cramps in my calves. They'll like seize up, but um, I can walk, I can lift, everything's good. But yeah, so, you, kinda... so that you just can't ever eat meat. Oh, uh, it's not. I just stopped because of that because I was like, wait, something I've done my entire life has caused this to happen. All right, I'm not going to do that anymore. But um, and then the vegan thing, I just realized that the reason why I constantly good thing it wasn't a car crash. Yeah, no. <laughs> the reason I uh, don't. Uh, sound like a, a cokehead anymore is because I, I realized that all the, the dairy I was consuming was, was not good. It was constantly, I was like <laughs> all the time. So I cut that oh, out. Yeah. So it's just easier to go that route. Um, Stacy, the kids I don't have milk. Yeah. They all eat all that good stuff. Yeah. You're a, uh, you're glutenless. How did you find that out? Yeah, I can't. Uh, I had really bad acid reflux for like three years <laughs> and I was like, I just took things out of my diet. So I was like, Oh, it's alcohol. Oh, it's coffee. Oh, it's sugar, which it kind of is sugar. Oh, yeah. it's this. Oh, it's that. It was fucking wheat. It was wheat. And I thought initially it was dairy and wheat, but as I took wheat out of my diet, I was able to digest dairy. Like I can't, I can't drink milk. I mean, I can, I'll just like get, I just won't feel good. But I can have like cheese and like yogurt and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, no, no, no delicious gluten for me, which sucks. So you, so uh, that's why you drink a lot because of because I can't have donuts or cake. There, there'll be a world for you. Oh yeah, I can't. The, the, like the the gluten free beer selection. There are so many more gluten free beers than there were three years ago, um, but it's just like they're not very good. Because yeah. they're just, it's the like poor excuse. It's like, I, I don't know. Do you eat like the, the vegetable oil meat? Oh, like the, like the, um, not Saitan, the. Impossible, Beyond Burger. Oh. Uh... Or, or Saitan, any of that stuff. Like, it's not, it's not bad, but it's not the same. That's how I feel yeah. about gluten-free beer. Where it's like, it's not bad and I'm glad it exists, but it's just like. If you really like beer, which which I do and I did, there's no way that you're gonna get the same satisfaction out of gluten free beer. You're just not. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna be there. No, for sure. Yeah, I never understood. I mean, I if I go to a restaurant and they have the Impossible Burger, I'm gonna get it because that's probably the only thing they have on the menu for me. But like the whole idea of creating a fake burger that bleeds when you cook it, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole reason you don't eat meat to begin with. Like if you're like. I'm I'm not that type of vegan. Like I, I have, shirt, <laughs> I have shirts that say like anti-vegan, vegan. Like I don't, I I'm not, I'm not. I you do what you eat, what you want. Like the kids, Stacy, they eat meat. It doesn't bother me. I do this for me, whatever. Um, but yeah, it's like wait, you are excited. Yeah, it's for that, health. Yeah, I was like, you're excited that somebody created a fake burger that looks like it's bleeding. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> But I'm glad that it exists because I can eat it. But I don't. I got nothing not, on that one, man. Yeah, that's not my selling point. Like, <laughs> oh man, I finally a burger that I can eat that bleeds. <laughs> um, are you are you ready to wrap? I don't want to keep you. I I don't know what you got going on. Yeah, it's been an hour and a half. Yeah, somebody just somebody just I gotta messaged, get back to work. Somebody just messaged my uh, pest control line asking if I can come out and do a follow up. Blech. Nope. I'm on live right. with WBK. Well, but good to good talking to you, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Guys, like, uh, go follow 
Mr. WB Knobloch on Instagram. Check him out, uh, WBK Ultra Group. Um, and yeah, uh, we probably keep doing this once a week. I'll either do it by myself or bring someone on, man. I appreciate you suffering through this with me. Thanks to everyone else that watched. Uh, I don't know how to do any of this stuff, so I'm just going to say it bye. It was fun. It was good. It's good to talk about regular off the wall stuff. See you, Chris. Just... Later. I don't know how to end any of this. So, guys, I have multiple things going on. All right, he's gone. Great show. See you all next time. Thank you, guys. Again, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And you didn't see my eyes the whole time. It's because I don't have reflective lenses yet. But this eye doesn't work anyway. So, all right, y'all. Later.